I mean, I've been saying it time and time again, but if any of you watching this right now go to see the Iron Claw, bring Kleenex, please. The Iron Claw was written and directed by Sean Durkin, and it stars Zac Efron, Jeremy Allen White, Holton the Colony, Lily James, among others. This is a great cast here, Harris Dickinson. And this tells the true story of the inseparable Von Erich wrestling family dynasty. Oh man, and if you're into wrestling history like I am, those of you who have been following my channel since the beginning, I have a whole section devoted to wrestling review podcasts with my co-host Tomas. He was actually watching the movie with me tonight, and let's just say this, both he and I share the same sentiment. If you guys watching out there are hardcore wrestling fans like we are, you owe it to yourself to watch The Iron Claw. So those of you who know the Von Erich story, you know that they make history in the intensely competitive world of pro wrestling in the early 1980s. And this is before Vince McMahon had built a gigantic monopoly. This is still the territory days. The Von Erichs were like the Kennedys in the Texas territory. Everybody knew who they were. They idolized these boys. And through tragedy and triumph under the shadow of their domineering father, Fritz, played here by Holt McCollany, the brothers seek larger-than-life immortality on the biggest stage in sports. Writer-director Sean Durkin isn't one that I'm overly familiar with in his work, but now that I've seen this movie and how he understands the source material, like, I just want to watch everything this guy does right now. Sean Durkin makes this movie feel so old-fashioned. Not just in how he presents the material, not just in the cinematography, not just in the grainy look of this movie, making it feel extremely old-fashioned, but he immerses you in the world of pro wrestling. As someone who has been to many a wrestling show throughout my lifetime, as someone who was just at WrestleMania last April in Los Angeles, I can tell you that the sound editing and the sound mixing, along with the raw graininess of everything going on in this environment, like, he really does a great job of making you feel like you're actually at a wrestling event. And the fact that the majority of this movie is taking place in the early to mid-1980s, like, this is just a time capsule for an avid wrestling fan. And this is not only one of the most immersive movies of the year. This is not only one of the most well-directed movies of the entire year. This might just be one of my favorite movies of the year. And I'm not just saying this as a bias, as a pro wrestling fan, an unconscious bias. The Iron Claw just, like... <laughs> <laughs> this was just, it was something, man. It was an experience. And I can't really say that about a lot of other movies that I've seen so far in 2023. I was in this thing hook, line, and sinker from scene one. And yeah, no spoilers or anything, but the emotional smackdown that this movie puts you through is just like, it's unlike any other. Like I said, the source material might be too harrowing for some, but if you're looking to feel inspired, the Iron Claw is the way to go. And the way you feel inspired is through the story of Kevin Von Erich, who is actually played here by Zac Efron. Now, it's amazing. Me, Tomas, and my buddy Thomas, who I watch movies all the time with, we were looking at this guy and we were thinking, this is Troy Bolton? Like, seriously, not only is this dude yoked out of his mind, you can tell that this guy has trained so hard for this assignment. And you can tell that this guy has done his homework. And I'm absolutely convinced that Zac Efron has such a firm grasp and a great understanding of how the industry actually works. And it results in what I believe to be the best performance of his career and the performance of a freaking lifetime from him. I joked about this last year with Robert Pattinson turning into Batman. Like anybody who wants to joke about him being the sing-song guy, the dancey guy from High School Musical, the basketball dude, get your head in the game. Like that ship has sailed. Like that joke is over. You know how I can tell that this was a great performance? I had to pinch myself and remind myself that I was watching Zac Efron. I felt like I was actually watching a young Kevin Von Erich navigate the business. I felt like I was watching him navigate through all the tragedy in his family and what he dubs the Von Erich curse. And I felt so much chemistry between him and the brothers. And every single performer that we get here is rock solid. All four of the brothers in here are great, including Efron. Jeremy Allen White gets so much meaty material in this as Carrie. Now, for those of you wrestling historians, let me just lay this out for you. It was Kevin, the pure athlete of the trio. It was Carrie, the rock star, good-looking stud of the group. You had David, the technician, played here masterfully by Harris Dickinson. And you also had Mike, who's played here by 
Stanley Simons, who didn't really want to get into the business altogether. The chemistry that these four share on screen is so palpable. Like, you could not have picked better actors to fill these parts. Hold McCollany, I want him to get recognized for Best Supporting Actor. This guy, like, I just wanted to, like, wring his neck and just, like, shake him. Like, wake the f*** up. This dude needed therapy. All this tragedy is going on around him, and all he cares about is the business that he thinks robbed him of opportunities. And all he wants to do is live vicariously through his sons. And this is almost a cautionary tale. This is a devastating story of what can happen when toxic masculinity takes you over. All I can say without spoiling anything, thank God for Kevin's wife, Pam. Pam is played here by the wonderful and beautiful Lily Jane, who I've loved since I saw her in the Cinderella remake. She was in Baby Driver as the love interest. And again, her and Efron have fantastic chemistry with one another. And the performances are only enhanced by the direction Sean Durkin is taking here. Not just in the old-fashioned filmmaking, but there are so many sequences where the editing just doesn't take over. Like in a normal WWE match nowadays, you see so many quick jump cuts. Sean Durkin doesn't do that. A lot of these wrestling sequences and a lot of the dramatic tension sequences are all done in one take. And it's crazy to look at those oners and see how much better it actually makes those performances. Because it really shows you how in the zone these people are. Like I'm telling you guys, this movie right here mixed my two greatest loves in entertainment together. Movies and pro wrestling. And like I said, any hardcore fan of the industry, if you are so into how the business works, if you're into the history of the business, you will be kicking yourselves if you miss the Iron Claw in theaters. I feel like this is the biggest gut punch of the year in terms of just evoking the greatest emotions out of you, while also giving you perhaps the greatest performance of Zac Efron's life. Let me address one thing though. This is a fictionalized version of events in order to streamline the movie. Because I will tell you, there is one huge historical discrepancy in terms of the family tree. And wrestling history purists might go into the Iron Claw and see that this exclusion is present. And they may hate that. Matter of fact, I know some people that will hate that. But Sean Durkin has said in interviews that there are a lot of things that he wish he did not have to omit. But they had to, I guess, in order to fill the 2 hour 15 minute runtime. Because let me tell you, if this was a completely historically accurate depiction of what actually happened, you'd be hitting about the 3 hour runtime. And I think there's only so much tragedy that the human body can take in a movie theater. But as it sits, The Iron Claw is one of my favorite movies of the entire year. Again, even if you're not a wrestling fan, some people might be turned off by the subject's material and how harrowing it may be. And yes, I do know wrestling kind of has that negative stigma on it. A lot of people call it fake. By fake, they actually mean scripted. And I want to say thank you to Sean Durkin for actually writing out and saying that the results are predetermined and it's not fake. But despite so many tear-jerking sequences, this movie will make you want to stand up and cheer as if you were actually in the sportatorium with these brothers. And I'll say it one more time. This is one of my favorite movies of the year. I am such a huge, huge advocate for the Iron Claw going into this upcoming award season. I hope it gets all the recognition that it oh so deserves. The Iron Claw will not only tug at your heartstrings, but it will inspire you. I'm going to give the Iron Claw an A+. Like, I'm telling you, if I was a pro wrestler, this would probably be the most believable finishing move out there. Because seriously, the Iron Claw actually looks like it would hurt. But guys, let me know what you thought of the Iron Claw down in the comments section below. Have you guys seen it yet? Have you guys gotten an early access screening to it? If you're a wrestling fan, who is your favorite wrestler? Who's your favorite old school wrestler? What are your favorite memories growing up watching wrestling? Let's all discuss those down in the comments section below. And feel free to check out some of my podcasts, the ZNT Wrestling Show, me and Tomas do. Because that's always a hoot, let me tell you. And one last thing before I go. If you want the true historical recounting of what actually happened, I would recommend going on Hulu, search up the Vice channel, search up Dark Side of the Ring. The Von Erich episode is season one, episode four. The real Kevin Von Erich is actually the big talking head throughout that episode. If you want to learn more about what actually happened after watching this movie, Dark Side of the Ring is a good follow-up piece there. But I love discussing all things movies, all things wrestling over here on this channel on the regular. If you're new, do consider subscribing and tap on that thumbs up as well. That would be a huge help. 
Stay tuned for more videos very soon. I'm looking forward to watching Wonka at the time of recording tomorrow night. Yeah, after a tragic story like this, I really need to cheer me up, guys. But stay tuned for all that and much, much more, my friends. Y'all are the best. And when the Iron Claw comes to a theater near you, you don't want to miss it. Thank you, A24. So with all that being said, back talk, commence.